We're finally starting to move out of the rather long, wet and not very cold winter of 2017 and that means that I've finally started to get some inspiration to work on this solar system again because this thing is in dire need of a lot of loving and as we can see in the PC here uh, we're starting to produce a fair bit of power if we check the data log and we can see that it's uh, actually been producing about 250-300 watt hours a day and uh, on every day we get uh, an event meaning that it's entered fully charge and we're not using any of the power we're putting in our batteries and that is because I don't actually have a system for using power other than manually flicking this switch here which uh, disconnects mains from this inverter so I figured it's time to let the, two, the summer of 2017 be the first season of my entirely automatic solar system which actually lets you use the power it produces. So we're going to be going through some stuff. I've got a timer waiting in the other room, in fact one of these, and which we're going to be putting together to uh, automate the switching of the inverter a couple of times a day perhaps. Uh, see. Well, I'm not going to be able to produce any kind of fancy automatic system which only allows me to draw as much power as uh, is produced. Uh, so we're going to go the manual route and just uh, uh, do something similar as I've done with this timer in my car heat and just uh, uh, produce some scheduling. Let's see if I remember how to use this. You choose channel and PN. Uh, there we go. So I'm just going to this is a quad channel timer, so what I'm figuring I'll do is I'll put all four channels in series and uh, I'll produce uh, uh, four timers which uh, just run the entire workshop on solar power for various lengths of time per day. So I might put timer one at uh, uh, half an hour, timer two at one hour, timer three at two hours and timer four at uh, four hours in the middle of the day. Just trying to uh, uh, allow me to just switch in various solar power run times uh, as is uh, required, or rather as is allowed uh, by the amount of sunshine which has uh, uh, arrived. So let's just get at that, and then at some stage I've really got to go through this rather sad looking battery bank. Uh, I would like to at some stage redo all the wiring for these because since all these batteries are essentially four series and a bunch in parallel uh, I do not need this ridiculously fat wiring. The only reason I'm using that is because it was free. And so about what I'd like to do is get some like 2.5 square millimeter a free phase wiring, five conductor and just to run some of that to like two banks and two banks and some extra grounding and uh, make this system a bit more flexible because Really, this is horrible to work with. It's just so ridiculously oversized. Uh, this uh, uh, battery wiring is rated for like a hundred amps, whereas the uh, maximum power we're ever going to see out of each string is like ten. So it's literally ten times too fat and ten times too cumbersome. And I've also got to give some loving to these 2011 batteries which have really low capacity the last time I tested them and these have just been sitting forever and I'm uh, kind of angry at myself for not giving these attention sooner and the same goes for this string here which has also just been sitting since one of the batteries went to, uh, kind of weird and I just didn't have any time to uh, or rather I didn't uh, feel like putting in the effort to you know, troubleshoot it. I think I swapped around batteries a couple of times but figured out I didn't have anyone which actually fitted properly so I'm, I'm really going to have like a battery testing marathon this year uh, just testing pretty much all the batteries one at a time uh, to try and uh, figure out which to combine with which but all those four are going to be together since they're all very similar even though they're acting weird yeah, but yeah, these oldies, yeah, they need some love. But yeah, we need to have a working solar system first. All right, and here's the timer we're going to be using. So as you can see, we've got to four switching relay contacts. So the way we're going to do this is I'm just going to connect to live to the normally closed contact on each of these relays. And then finally, 
out of the this giant 16 amp connector going to the inverted UPS and uh, then we're just going to be able to program these timers to open the relay up at set times for set intervals and we can uh, just have essentially have four different levels of solar runtime in a single day. Uh, I'm not going to be fancy using the connectors, we're just going to be pulling uh, these particular cables in and out of the unit and jumping between the contacts with just normal 1.5 square millimeter installation wire. So, let's go. I guess I've finished absolutely dangerous looking device. I promise it's not a bomb. Anyway, uh, I have just connected everything up very basically. And as you can see, uh, we've got mains coming in there somewhere. I've also pairing the timer, going in this black wire here, into the normally closed contact of each relay, and finally going out the output cable. And as you can see, we're getting 230 volts out. And if my theory is correct, if I turn any of these on, the output goes away. And that is indeed the case. So now when I configure each of these timers to turn on, uh, the output will be disabled. And I can actually, even if I want to, uh, connect something to the uh, normally open contact on these relays to uh, switch something to 230 volts grid when I'm running on battery power if so needed. For instance, if I want to have some uh, timer or something to measure the time I'm actually running on batteries. So that's all well and good. This is probably going to keep together good enough for my purposes. It's not. It's going to be covered up under these piece of plastic anyway, so no one's going to die by poking around in there because indeed all of that stuff is live at mains voltage. No pokey pokey. I'm also going to have to pay some attention when I connect up the cord to the wall since we're using these Shukos here in Finland, which are not polarized. Uh, I need to make sure that uh, I'm actually switching uh, the live and uh, not the neutral. And I'll just check that by uh, measuring between ground and uh, the energized pin uh, when it's connected up. So that's all well and good. Uh, now all I've got to do is put some backup batteries in this so I don't have to reconfigure it every time I uh, lose power. And we'll be good to put this thing in service. Oh, okay, I've already got the battery in there and it's dead. Uh, not surprising since it's been lying around since forever. Let's actually check that. It does draw a fair amount of power while it's not plugged in, so I'm expecting this to be like 1 volt. Oh, 5.7. So that's roughly where it cuts out. What a shame. That was a waste of a perfectly good 9 volt battery. Oh well. Ah, bummer. To top everything off, I only have these uh, dodgy lithium 9 volt batteries lying around. Uh, I'm all out of alkaline ones, so uh, here's to hoping the, this thing won't just randomly cut out and throw out my programming data. But I'll have to replace with this ASAP, which is not too much fun since you have to do it while the unit is powered on and We've got way too much main stuff in here for that to be a lot of fun. But oh well, that'll do. It's not cutting out instantly at least. Good enough for me. So that's all the hardware stuff out of the way. That just leaves the programming. And as you might be able to tell, this thing is running entirely in Finnish. And I don't speak Finnish. However, I have kind of figured this thing out in the past. So let's see what we can manage. So let's start by just setting the clock. Uh, usefully enough, uh, we just entered excess daylight savings time today. So I'm not going to have to set this for another half year. So it's 14.21 on a Sunday, so we press that button, then we press Sunday, and it triggers twice and doesn't work, Sunday, and we get the Sunday LED there, and then we enter the time, 14.22. This control panel is very, very dicky. Sunday, one, four, two, two. Pinaco us. There we go. Time set. 
Now all I've got to do is program it, and that's aid. Uh, that's such a bother, since uh, I have cleaned this control panel 8, but as you can see, it's rather worn out, and that causes the keys to trigger multiple times, and that just... Uh, rather than letting you continue on your way, it just says error and makes you start all over again on everything. But let's see if we can get, like, channel 1 to run half an hour, channel 2, 1 hour, 2 hours, 3 hours. Alright, and I think we got that, so let's check out with time. So, channel 1 should turn on... Ugh. Channel 1 should turn on at 12 and turn off at 12.30. You can see that it very well does. And let's go out of this. And you press Kello. Now you go out of there. Come on, Kello. Out of there. Go away. You can see why the backup batteries are a rather important feature in this device. In anyway, channel 2 should turn off at 13. Yes, indeed. So that's fine. Gello. Channel 3 should... Ch ch channel 3 should turn off at 14. So that's two hours of solar operation per day. Our fourth channel should run for an entire three hours, turning off at 15. And indeed it does. So, this timer should be ready to go. Now, it's a bit odd that uh, this channel isn't on since uh, it uh, actually is within the range of that being enabled, but uh, I suppose it hasn't it passed through the 12 mark where where you actually where we actually set the on command so this thing is pretty stupid it's a japanese timer from the 1980s so you can't expect too much advanced functionality out of it it's rather power efficient though with all this stuff running uh, and the led display and everything is drawing th two to three watts of power that's what happens if we turn on all the relays yeah, all the relays enabled just uh, puts a power up at 7 watts, so at least it's not a giant power hog, as many modern PC-based systems would probably be. So, let's put this thing in service. Uh, that's lovely plastic. And here's a lesson in cleverness. So, after all that configuration and mucking about, I pulled out the power cord in order to do some extra testing in order to make sure this thing doesn't catch fire. And what do you know? It said zero, zero, zero on the display, and all of that data entry was lost forever. Because I'd been smart when I put it away and disengaged the battery jumper. Let's put that where it's supposed to be. Let's do all that again. Yeah, so since, since this thing is not really rated for super high mains power use originally, I've just modified and beefed up a couple of traces. In here, I've got a two kilowatt space heater. Let's give it a go. And it's been running for 15 minutes and 37 seconds now. And everything's seeming quite all right. One of the relays is running a bit warm. Uh, probably it might be a junk box relay, so I'm not too concerned. It's running, running at about 50 degrees uh, at the contact when when it's on the absolutely maximum load. But I, I'm going to say that's fine. I've ticked it back and forth a few times and it got a bit better. So I'm going to call that a decent test. This thing is never going to see more than a few hundred watts of load anyway, so it doesn't quite matter. And we're going to reprogram this thing and put it in service with a backup battery connected. All right, 
what and when they originally installed them in time and that's going to be the easiest thing ever. Old cord out, new cord in. And the other end into the S of the UPS. There we go, timer installed. So now all I've got to do is set all these to auto. Check if we're breaking the live and not the neutral, and we'll, we'll be good to go. We actually need to disconnect this in order to check that. Because we need to measure between ground and both of these pins. If we get no AC voltage, then we're breaking the right thing. So, 3 volts of air. And nothing at all there. So that's our neutral. And that's gonna be our broken wire. And let's verify, if we tick this back on, we're gonna get 230 volts there. Yes, indeed. Sweet. Everything's good to go. And that's it. So now I've got the ability to select between 30 minutes of solo a day, one hour, two hours, and three hours. All automatic. Well, of course, I need to choose the amount of power manually, but that's going to depend on the weather. So, unless you want to bring in some really fancy automation which would talk to the solar charge controller or the battery voltage, that's going to be way too much effort for me. So, with that, I'll leave it at 30 minutes. I'll well, thank you for watching. Cheerio.